Josh. Hey, Jake. Hey, how's it going? Good. I'm excited to do another video. I'm stoked, man. I brought uh, I brought all my, all my favorite stuff. I have um, I have uh, this one is like my favorite beach ball, just in case, you know. Thought it could be yeah. fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have uh, I have my bucket. Um, ah. just because you, you know you, you just it just helps to have the bucket in there too. Um. And then, of course, you know we're doing sandboxes, so I have uh, I have my favorite shovel as well. Oh, so it's yeah. gonna be a lot of fun. Once again, I think maybe we um, had a miscommunication. Huh? The yeah. sandboxes. Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, you see, sandbox it means something different in D and I I don't know what you're talking about, but. I'm ready to build some sand castles, so it's a construction zone. All right. Well, we'll be talking about sandboxes in this video, so let's get to it. So how's it going, everybody? As always, my name is Jake, and I am joined by my good friend Josh, and we are J&J &J Tabletop. We're going to be talking about sandboxes in case you couldn't tell from the intro <laughs> um so josh when it comes to dungeons and dragons tabletop rpgs this whole thing the whole reason why people are here what, what do you mean when you you use the term sandbox and like how does that relate to what what it would be used for in this so a sandbox is essentially um it, it's like a setting right so it could be anything from like a, a town or a dungeon, uh, like a, any sort of other region, whether it's like a forest or or underwater, under dark, uh, tundra, desert, like uh, anything, a castle, continent, plane of existence, world, space station, galaxy. Literally any of those things could be a sandbox. Um, and all that is is just some sort of place that has things for the players to interact with um when i think about like examples of a sandbox i immediately go to in like popular culture one that i'd be shocked if people didn't pick up um usually the first one that comes to mind whether you like it or don't like it would be the elder scrolls games um so like skyrim mm -hmm. you are immediately thrown into you know there's some sort of main quest whatever but then after you do that you have a sandbox you could go to White Run, and you could pick up all the quests there. And White Run itself is is a very small sandbox, right? Uh, where you could pick up quests and all those kind of things. Or you could go to a different place. I want to join the Stormcloak, <laughs> so I'm going to go out out there. Was it Windhelm? Is that right? I think so. I think it's Windhelm. The one out east on the map. There's one. There's one that <laughs> starts with an R too. I don't. I don't remember the names. Oh, I, I... Rorikstead. Rorikstead. Where Ragnar maybe. the Red is from. That's where the song. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but the, the point being, a sandbox is essentially any sort of place where you can go and interact with the world. A lot of the time people say like sandbox play versus like, it's like more linear and more sandboxy. So yeah, linear being like railroad i'm sure you've heard it before where you're following a set piece of events that kind of thing you gotta stay on track yeah <laughs> and then the sandbox being just here's all your options um you know here's the world here's the map every time something happens it's a bloop on your quest thing and you could choose to do it or choose not to do it that's kind of sandbox in a nutshell those are all the things that come to mind when i when i think about it yeah um, I, re I really really like the example of skyrim because it's a lot of people that play D and D and and this would would really be able to relate to that. Uh, and it really is like you have the quest, and at this point you just have different quest markers in your journal that you're just like, oh, what I want to go pick Nern Root. So go pick Nern Root. Have fun. Like it might be kind of daunting if you're a DM sitting there to try and figure out like, all of the details that you might find in Skyrim, but you have to realize that that had a ton of developers and a team that put something like that together can't yeah. wait for actually elder scrolls 6 to come out because that's always fun someday someday <laughs> um maybe they'll 
they'll adapt Skyrim to a different platform. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> In the meantime, when you, when you mention like a, a huge sandbox like uh, Skyrim, right? Sure, that could be very daunting. But one of the other things that we mentioned was a town or a city or a dungeon. Like you, your sandbox doesn't have to be this massive, huge place. Your sandbox could be a, a city that has, you know, uh, four different NPCs and each of them has stuff going on that they might need help with. Yeah. It could be something simple like, like, wow, where you, you know, you're delivering pancakes to, whoever and and you know you need to go kill however many boar and you know get their pick their toenails and deliver them to this person and that fetch quests all that kind of stuff doesn't have to be crazy but you you could you could easily set up a small sandbox um and then just build from there we we've done a, a couple of gameplay sessions uh one on our channel uh you know dragon of ice Spire peak i feel like it's a simpler one but i think that's a pretty classic sandbox um, Pretty much sometimes feels like that's what they've reduced the Forgotten Realms to. <laughs> is that Sword Coast right there is your sandbox. Uh, I love that meme where everything does the mm-hmm. Forgotten Realms and that's <laughs> that's the remembered realms. The best. I love that. But in that example, you know, you have you know the uh Waterdeep and uh Neverwinter are right there. There's this the town of Fandolin is right there in the middle, which kind of serves as your home base, whether you're playing Lost Minds of Fandelver or Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. And then there's just a whole bunch of different places to explore. And like Josh said, you almost kind of get this like sandbox in a sandbox situation going on. And I feel like that works really well with our other gameplay that you're DMing in uh Ancient Relics and Hokey Religions for rare drop roleplay. So I think probably the strongest example there would be the Savalier Wood is the big sandbox. And then we have other places that you designed that we could explore and, and had their own uh, other things to, to play with. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you could... That's definitely the sandbox you guys you spent a lot of time in, right? The Savalier Wood. Um, and and you could say the overwhelming sandbox would be like Exandria or Wildman as a whole, right? Where it's like, oh, well, there's the Dwendalian Empire, there's... there's uh, uh, what if they want to go to Zorhas? What if they want to go to the Menagerie Coast? And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that you guys will do all of those things at certain points, or maybe some of those things, maybe not all of them. Um, but right now you're in the Savalier Wood. So looking at the Savalier Wood as a sandbox, what do we have in there? You have Mole Smear, which was obviously your goal, right? Um, but aside from that, you have uh, distorted animals in there right different types of enemies and stuff that you come across in random encounters would would still be part of a sandbox um you, you had uh goblins that were forming war bands and and that kind of thing uh there was a, a temple dungeon thing that you guys found in there that set you off on a on on a course uh, uh mm-hmm. there, there's a tabaxi village that you you didn't really have to get as involved with them as as you did um and you know you, you, there there was a whole bunch of stuff with that um mm-hmm. and then the, the the hag and and her hut and and all of those things yeah. all of these are are examples of of places and mm-hmm. uh npcs and monsters and and quests uh that you could fill a sandbox with like i mean even with within mole smear there there's there's just a, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot there is, there, you know. and um, I, I'm really happy that we're we're doing this video to hopefully put together or link together some of the other videos that we've done when we had this idea for this series because you look at something that's as big as a Savalier Wood alone, which is a sandbox inside the Graying Wildlands, and then Wild Mount, like you said, and as the farther back you go, but you had a way of taking a large place like the Savalier would it took us about a month or so I mean probably a little less but still to go from Shady Creek Run all the way up to Malayasmere and you still had a way to keep it both simple and yet big and that was something I really appreciated that you were doing and you I, I haven't seen your notes but I know you you had your I'm sure you had your table of things to do and I 
they could have been complicated, could have been simple. I don't know. But I think all you need to do is just have some kind of travel mechanic, maybe survival checks to stay on track. Maybe you're you're keeping track of supplies. Mm-hmm. And then just maybe there's an encounter today. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. Oh, look, you found this ash bowl thing that opened <laughs> up the the, uh, the temple. That was awesome. Um, you don't have to go crazy because like i know myself when i would think about oh what am i gonna do like they're they're traveling in this forest that's just vast and gigantic i and then you start thinking like i want to give my players agency and i have to make this skyrim like environment yeah if you're if you're trying to take this large place like the savalier would and you're not sure where to start just have a little something for each pillar of play and that's why we did those videos you have your social you have your exploration and your combat i feel like because you want to make something excellent that you're going to give to your players to explore you want to or at least i want to when i dm i want to make a, a something fun for my players to explore and and, and enjoy but it, there's it's almost like the simpler that a subject becomes the closer you are to getting it right in a way, and I feel like if you just have a few simple points, you're going to. It's going to be good, and the three play the three pillars of of D and D. I think is a great place to start. Yeah, I I totally agree, and it's like when you're talking about a sandbox, what we've been getting at right this whole time is like the point of a sandbox is to give your players things to engage with. So when you're asking yourselves the question, how how do I give them things to engage with? How are they going to engage with, um, the the content well the three ways to engage with something in this game are the three pillars of the game it's exploration social interaction and combat what does that mean for a sandbox well you you have your exploration and uh, uh, side of things so it's like okay so we're making this city town village whatever inside of that city there's going to be some interesting places to visit that could mean, you know, the the site of a great battle where we'll put it this way, right? Um, think of a, a real life example um, in in Pearl Harbor, and I don't know if it's still like this, but in in Pearl Harbor, my parents went went to Hawaii for their honeymoon, and you know, forever ago, and they they saw nice uh, Pearl, <laughs> Pearl Harbor, and, and one of the uh, boats that that had sunk, you, you could see oil still dripping up from it even you know years decades decades later yeah um think of something like that's a that's a real world example right of an interesting place to visit because something significant happened there and the area around it that is still experiencing the effect you're still seeing like you 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 go to that place where the battle happened Mm -hmm. and you know you still see the blood in the river or or whatever um is happening because of that um there's mm-hmm. the the sword in the stone that is stuck there forever now because whatever great crazy person you know struck down the enemy and turned them to turn them both to stone and now they're both there and yeah. it became a monument uh, an example really quick i've been reading mythic odysseys of theros a lot lately because i have some campaign ideas and one of the things they used to explain how the how things might have been formed was, you know, a hammer of the gods landed and that just formed a mountain range as the earth was, you know, anything like that can be, it could be grand, it could be big like that, it could be small, it could be innocent, it could be... I, I love that you said that too, because I was, uh, I, I went to Colorado a while back, a long time ago, and one of the places I visited is called Garden of the Gods. Um, a lot of crazy rock formations there. It's just a very, very nice, beautiful place. Uh, one of them is like camels. It's lit- I think it's called like kissing camels. And it literally is just a rock formation that when you look at it a certain way, it looks like two camels are kissing. World building is putting something like that there because it is, it's, it's there in the real world. We have stuff like that in the real world. Mm-hmm. And now we pop into the social interaction side of things, put some interesting NPCs in there. Your NPCs can drive the exploration factor. All right, well, sure. why, why did they call it Garden of the Gods, and why is why are the, how did the camels get there? Why are they kissing? Your NPCs are going to have all sorts of different reasons for yeah. it. You know, 
uh, oh, you'll have the, the scientist that gives you the exact reason, like Nooch is there just telling you exactly why, you know, these rocks did this, that, and the other thing, and it just yeah. happened to, to do that. You know, you have someone who's going to say, like, oh, well, you know, uh, the, the god of, of the forge slammed down his hammer, and when he mm -hmm. did it, like, this happened, and you are now creating just, like, um, all of these myths around some of the There's location. all that, of a sudden. It, yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it, you, it's interesting because just the name, the kissing camels, that made me just like the name is the hook. Like, oh, what? Why? Why do they call it that? Yeah, like, I want to know. <laughs> but <laughs> and that could either be how you're creating it, or you create something and you'd be like, I would, oh, I would totally call it this. Like, like you could start either way mm -hmm. to create something. And the, the fun thing with a name like that too is you don't have to tell the players what they're like you don't have to tell them exactly what it looks like or or they don't necessarily need to know what they're looking for right like if if you give them some sort of crazy story that an npc is talking about for this thing that happened and like you know once you get to the kissing camels then travel you know two miles down this way and go around and until you see this and they'll be like kissing camels what's that and then the, you'll know it when you see it Mm -hmm. you know like yeah. or like the grand canyon like what what's that it's like well it's this giant hole it's <laughs> yeah like, it's, it's like that doesn't exactly do it justice but you'll know it when you see it oh yes you um, and the combat side of things is like well you, you have all these people visiting these places right now put some enemies in between the people in those places or put some enemies at those places themselves so if if you are going to like the kissing camels like maybe that's a holy place right well now there's some sort of monsters desecrating that area well, you need to go through you need to do something about it mm -hmm. and again one of the other social sides of things is maybe there is some sort of priest in town who's not strong enough to do something about it himself but he'll offer a reward to someone who will do it mm -hmm. well that's that's an adventure that's, yeah that's that's an adventure which is part of a sandbox like you, you you just you did it you put you put an npc in a town yep. give them something that's important to them and attach it to a location put some risks in there and you have a quest if the players want to take it they take it if they don't want to take it then you move on to something else mm -hmm. and you always have it in your back pocket if they don't for something else exactly and, and a, a big tip for i think making combats uh combat encounters interesting is we've and we've always it seems to be a common thread is why are they there? If yes. you can answer that, you're now you have motivations for the NPCs. <laughs> All the three pillars, they're, they're kind of linked. They're holding up a, a single foundation of what everything is going to sit <laughs> on. So that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, no, you're 100% correct. Um, and, and just to back up for like one second and also move forward at the same time, I don't know if that, if that makes any sense or anything, but like one of the things that Jake and I wanted to talk about here was was sandboxes and how they should evolve over time based on decisions that your players make. Well, when you're talking about the you're talking about this this holy site or whatever that bad things are happening at and your players say, "Nah, I don't want to do that." Okay. What happens now because they did not do that? Um, did the priest try to do it himself? Is he missing now? Uh, is there a rival group of adventurers that the people like more because they did a quest for the people and not for the gold? Yeah. Um, was there something that there was there a reason that these and this is what Jake was just saying a second ago? Was there a reason that those monsters were there at that place at that time, and they were able to carry out some plan that you didn't you had no idea existed because you didn't go there? Well, now they were able to carry out their plan. What does that mean for the world? And what kind of quests does that now open up? It's like a telltale game. You make a decision, and it says, Jake will remember that. <laughs> you know, yeah, like... It's the butterfly effect. <laughs> and that's the way it goes. Like, I think back to our Dragon of Ice by Peak game, I, I felt like, you know, that I'm not normally somebody who likes to do preset adventures, um, but it is something that, after running Dragon of Ice by Peak, made me want to do more of them, so... Maybe we'll do some of those. If you want to see us run something, let us know in the comment section and perhaps we'll take a look at it. But I felt like I was able to take a few different things that even the adventure itself said, like, that's, you know, a dabra won't go with the party or whatever. So, but 
I feel like I don't remember exactly, but I feel like Daisy was just like threatening her. Like, you're coming with us, lady. <laughs> Maybe not quite that intense, but still. Uh, I think there was conversation about knocking her out and just bringing her back. So some, something to that effect. It felt it felt like, oh, that was definitely a part I felt a little like, oh, I don't know what to do right now <laughs> as, a, as a DM. Um, but you brought her back. And I did a couple of things there. And actually, I'm going to be talking about this in uh, a certain series that's coming up and how to run Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. And I actually was writing notes about it today. It's probably a little ways off as far as when this video is going to come out. But one of the, uh, the effects of that is she normally sells healing potions. You separated her from her ability to do that. So I don't think you as as players felt it all that much because I think you just were fine for the most part with everything you went through but if you needed healing potions they were not going to be available until that shop was completed simple but that was an effect i had determined was like well she's only got like three potions left and that's all she she can't make more right now hmm. and it was just like a little thing that you know she's not supposed to be in phandalin but she is so how would that affect her and how would that then affect the party yeah, and it opened up a new blip in the sandbox of Phandalin itself, right? Like, you know, now she's trying to set up her shop there. And also the sandbox evolving. Well, now you have a shop inside of Phandalin that was not there previously. And you also have uh, uh, Toblin trying to help her build all of these things and stuff. And now, like, if there's something we needed him for, he's tied up trying to do this mm -hmm. other thing. And, and you know... That's consequences, that's agency, and then that's like it's funny because a lot of the time when we record videos like this, I feel like we end up talking about some of the same things, but it's just because there there's these like there there are these core concepts that you could talk about whatever topic you want, but it's usually it's gonna come down to these core things that you really need to to go through and and agency is one of the biggest ones like you, your players should have the choice to do things, but those choices need to matter and they need to change the world because of those choices. And and like we said earlier, it doesn't have to be like a major consequence. It could be small. Like in that example, I don't even know if I don't honestly remember exactly what it was, but I don't really feel like you needed healing potions. You might have had one and you're like, that's fine. You know, but if you did need them, they weren't there. That was a little small thing, and like you said, Barthen wouldn't be able to, you know, maybe do something if you needed him because he's he's working on building that new windmill. <laughs> Barthen Toblin was the barkeep, right? Yeah, to to the bar. Stonehill Inn. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But yes, and Toblin. Toblin Toblin. I don't remember. Uh, spell it out for us. <laughs> yeah can you let us let us know how to pronounce is it toblin or is it toblin just let us know by writing Spell it out phonetically this way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yes everything comes down to and and we're huge huge proponents of player driven D. &D. it's not that you can't have a successful game on a more linear path if that's what everybody's into that's what everybody's into and that's fine there's certainly more than one way to play Dungeons and Dragons, but if you want to have your players feel as though the things that they do matter and the, the scope of, of what's going to happen, whether certain plots succeed or fail, it comes down to agency and and that's that's really what it comes down to with a sandbox at the same time. That's what sandboxes are about. Sandboxes are they're inherently player driven we kind of talked about this in the very beginning where a lot of the time like people is like oh are you are you doing sandbox play or linear play and i think th there's a happy medium but like typically when, when you're talking about a sandbox you, it is it is some sort of world where you're just giving the players the tools to choose what adventure they want to do and with whom they want to do that adventure with it's funny how there comes to, uh, certain simple points that you like you said, core principles that you just keep coming back to over and over again. And how are you a successful DM? Like, well, there's many ways you could measure that. But if you're just talking about like the skills, like the skill set, it's being comfortable and learning how to kind of philosophically ap approach situations. Because 
lord knows players do all sorts of funny things and you just don't always know sometimes the player doesn't even know how many times have we heard evan say you know echo lives in this part in my head and he'll say things like echo got so angry when such and such happened or whatever that may be you know and sometimes the players don't even know what's going to happen next so you just have yeah. to handle it together and if you if you if you get comfortable approaching certain situations with principles that give agency and and show players that their decisions will matter it's going to be rewarding for everybody it just is and that's why yeah. i made this playlist hopefully help some people yeah <laughs> hopefully we can help some people <laughs> um you know achieve that before we go i think i would like to give you just some questions off the dome that i think will help you if you're trying to make a sandbox just like kind of directly go right into that um i'd say some some of the questions that that i would ask yourself if you're making a sandbox what is the biggest monster in the region <laughs> right um what is a battle that happens nearby where can i get a drink where can i sleep the night where can i uh restock my supplies loot mm -hmm. <laughs> what do the people worship slash care about um a holy site nearby any sort of faction that you want whether that is straight combat or whether that's like a thieves guild is there a faction that's important to the region um just ask yourself some questions like that and there's like there's that's those were honestly those are the first few things i could think of but if you just google like questions for a sandbox you're probably going to get like hundreds of those questions like put it in reddit or something like that i was um, gonna say you're probably going to get like dimensions and think, recommendations for wood josh <laughs> oh all right yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fair. You're, you're right you're right but like, like, <laughs> google is a tremendous resource <laughs> um, probably some crazy browser histories uh, out there for dungeon masters oh yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> um you need to know about 19th century french <laughs> economy <laughs> why uh, dungeon master 100 <laughs> um, percent. the things that i've googled like when trying to just prep for a campaign is just kind of amazing um but but yeah i mean think about things that would be fun and exciting just ask yourself those questions come up with answers to those questions as you answer those questions also ask yourselves them i think we talked about this in the combat video don't just ask what ask why because when you are able to anyone can answer what but when you can answer why on top of what <laughs> that's when you have a really fleshed out world a fleshed out sandbox if you will where um, players are really going to have a lot of fun and just really want to dive into and, and invest in there but yeah if you have any questions about uh sandboxes what you know maybe something that you felt like you want us to ex expand upon in the comment section uh that's what that's for you want to learn more about exploration uh combats social encounters that's what we have the playlist that we created for and hopefully tie everything together and give you some more in-depth tools to create your sandbox of your own but we'd love to hear about any time you gave your players agency in your games or maybe you experienced it as a player and you thought what the dm did was really cool let us know we love to uh learn from you just as much as you could learn from us we feel like it's just a yeah that's that's what community is all about you get to teach each other and help each other so any tips throw them down there in the comment section any other video topics you want to hear from us too don't forget to hit that bell and subscribe and we'll see you next time all right punch that bell punch it smack it karate chop c -c 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 combo breaker hello <laughs> <laughs> <Hubble can. laughs> do that to the bell and also check us out on tiktok i'm gonna i'm gonna try to explain meta to you again um there was okay there was an old game um where you would play as like the green army men you know um mm -hmm. and uh i think there was a level in that game where you played in a sandbox right so we are doing a video about sandboxes if in this video about sandboxes we mentioned oh 
as the example instead of giving like uh like skyrim and and all of, all of those places the as the example if we made a sandbox and a sand castle inside that box and now you have a sand kingdom and sand people and you know that the sandbox is also a sandbox that's meta I thought I already knew what meta meant. Yeah. All right.